Hello, this is Taryn from Edition Plamondon, and this is my ultimate DIY guide to click tracks for classical musicians using the free open source software Audacity. If all you need is a regular good old fashioned metronome, it's as easy as going to generate rhythm track. Voila, done. But if you're watching this, you're probably looking for something with a little bit more rhythmic nuance than that. For music under the classical umbrella, that's classical with a lowercase c, there's all sorts of push and pull, like accelerandos, retardandos, rubato, all those wonderful Italian terms. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in Audacity. The first step is to create a reference track. Now, if the piece is really short and everybody agrees to do it in one take, you might be able to skip this step, but a really useful click track has something within it other than just clicks to help people orient themselves. So what is a reference track? Here are three ways to make one. Number one, the Jamie Abersold. This is the easiest way to do it. All you need is a metronome, preferably with some headphones, and you're just going to record yourself reading out some of the rehearsal letters and bar numbers. Something important to consider is syllable stresses, especially for words that are polysyllabic like 11 or W. You want to be consistent and precise about where you put the stress. Nine. Thirteen. Seventeen. Twenty-one. Repeat. Thirteen. It's pretty much as easy as that. The main downside is you have no pitch reference. So this is really a bare minimum sort of reference track. All you're doing is giving signposts so musicians can find their place for each take. I personally don't like this one very much because I hate the sound of my own voice and it throws me off mid-take. Number two, the content ID claim. This is also a pretty straightforward way to do it, but it requires that the piece that you're doing already has an existing recording and the recording itself was done to a click. That is, there's little to no tempo variation in it. It's also nice if the recording's in the same key as your sheet music. But if it's not, you can always change the pitch in Audacity. I'll trust you to Google that one if you need it. Of course, most chamber works or classical works with a conductor don't meet these criteria, but if they do, this is a great option. The reference track isn't in the final product, so you don't have to be precious about copyright and stuff. Number three, the MIDI master. Now this one is a little bit of extra work, but I really think it's the way to go for music that has a lot of those subtle tempo variations that make classical cadences and romantic harmonies so satisfying. Open up your music notation software of choice. Sticking with the free software theme of this video, I'm gonna use MuseScore. If you're a good pianist, you might be able to get away with just recording the parts on their own on a piano, but I am not a good pianist, so I need tools like this to help me out. Now I'm just gonna input a couple of the parts. The more the merrier to generate a MIDI track. It's helpful to have a MIDI keyboard for this step, but believe it or not, I actually prefer to enter everything manually with my computer keyboard. It may sound like a ton of work, but once you develop a fluency in notation software, it's really quite easy, especially since we don't need to worry about details like articulations and slurs in this case. In fact, I didn't even bother inputting the title and composer in this file. You should include general tempo markings, but don't bother with tempo fluctuations like retardandos and accelerandos. I recommend inputting the bass line first, and by the end of that, if you're not ready to tear your hair out, then you should input the instrument that has the melody most often. If the piece is less than six or seven parts, I'll usually just input all of them because I'm hardcore. Whatever your method, you now have a reference track to build on. Drag and drop it onto Audacity, and it'll produce this handy waveform. This is what your reference track looks like. Now, waveforms can be really hard to parse, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to create labels. The first step is to find all the time signature changes as well as major tempo changes. Don't worry about slight tempo variations like rubato and accelerandos just yet. You can use space to start and stop playback to try and place the playhead as close to the start of the beat as possible. You can create a label with the shortcut Control b and I'd recommend assigning it a measure number or a rehearsal letter so we can refer back to it later. I'm also going to control B the very first beat of measure one. In my case, it's the very start of the audio, but that may not be the case for you if there's a pickup bar. By the way, I recommend writing some of these keyboard shortcuts down because there's gonna be a lot of them and none of them are particularly memorable. You know, control B for label. The next step is when we add an actual click. Under the tracks menu, go to add new and then select mono track. Then go ahead and add a second mono track. 
Already our labels are coming in handy because we're going to use the very first one as the starting point for our click track. Using the label as a guide, click on one of the empty mono tracks and then open the Generate menu and select Rhythm Track. We now get this dialog with tons of sliders and buttons, but we're only concerned about these ones. Double check that these two are set to zero. Now you can simply input your tempo, how many beats per bar, and how long the click track should last in bars or minutes and seconds. You don't need to be precise with that setting. I usually just enter a really big number like 500 bars and then I just trim the extra bars off. Next, you can choose from the wonderful high quality click sounds Audacity has to offer. You can use the preview button to get an idea of what they sound like. Some of them are downright obnoxious, but whatever floats your boat. Next on the other mono track, we're going to generate another rhythm track, but this time with a different sound. We're going to use the second sound to telegraph that it's a count in and not an actual measure. This is useful in the beginning of the piece as well as right after fermatas. For the time being, we can put this track on mute. You're going to have to repeat this process for every label we have so far. That's every time signature change and also every major tempo change. But don't do it just yet. First, we're going to set up the count in at the very beginning. Use Control A to select everything, and use the Time Shift tool to move everything over by a few bars. You want to account for one or more measures for a count in, and a little bit of extra silence at the beginning so the musician can prepare. Use your musician's intuition for this part. If the tempo is slow, one bar of count in will do nicely. In my case, this is a blazing fast polka, so I'm going to use four bars. Just remember there needs to be at least two clicks to establish a tempo. Now we're going to select only the click tracks. Click on the box to the left of one of them, then hold shift and click on the other one. You can now slide the click tracks to the left using the waveforms to guide you. We have a little bit of space at the beginning and a clear four bar count in. Now we can go back and input the rest of the tempos. Make sure you keep the clicks consistent with each other on the mono tracks. What we have now is a working click track that'll do the bare bones of what we need. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty. At this point, I definitely suggest you stop and save a backup copy of your file, because Audacity is a destructive application. Now that sounds kind of extreme, but I mean it in contrast of non-destructive applications like Photoshop or Ableton Live. If you use them correctly, Photoshop will apply layers and instructions so you can easily change your mind about anything else down the road. Within Audacity, all we have is the undo feature, which isn't very helpful if you've performed 86 edits and then you change your mind about the very first one. So let's create an accelerando. First, you'll want to create a label at the beginning and a label at the end of the tempo fluctuation by using Control-B. Now select everything between those two labels, including the click tracks and the label track, very important, and under the Effect menu, go to Sliding Time Scale slash Pitch Shift. We're now going to indicate how much we want to speed up. Since Audacity is set up generally for audio and not measured music, you're going to have to convert your tempos into percentages. The easiest way to do that is to use this formula. So for example, if I wanted to accelerate from 90 BPM to 120 BPM, Using the formula, I can see that this is a 33.3 increase in tempo. The sliding timescale slash pitch shift plugin will apply a gradual increase in speed to the whole region we've selected. This will work for slowing down as well with a negative percentage. It's good to get in the habit of adding information to your labels. Here I've added the bar number, the BPM, and the percentage so that I can keep track of it later. Let's say we want this new, slightly faster tempo to hold steady for a few bars before slowing back down to our original tempo. Find the first bar where the rallentando begins and press Control B to add a label. Now we're going to select everything between these two labels, again including the metronome and the label tracks, very important. Go to Effect and choose Change Tempo. Since we've already converted our BPM into percentages, we can just enter that percentage into this box. I also should mention, because of the way audio waveforms work, just squishing the waveform like this will make everything sound at a higher pitch. That's why we chose Change Tempo instead of Change Speed. In order to speed up the music without affecting pitch, Audacity has to sort of cleverly remove little chunks of audio from your waveform. Our metronome clicks are so short that it's actually possible Audacity will just completely discard them in this process. To prevent that, make sure you select the box Use High Quality Stretching. Audacity will look for much smaller little chunks to remove, leaving our metronome clicks intact. Now that this local section is sped up, I'm going to slow back down to our original tempo. I'll press Control-B to add another label. 
and then apply our sliding time scale slash pitch shift, but this time in reverse. The starting tempo is 33.3% and will end at zero. That's how you make a nice little cohesive tempo fluctuation. Remember to listen to it once just to see if you like it, because you can still undo things at this stage, but you can't later on. This is where having a really good reference track is helpful to see if you like the pacing. The next thing to talk about are fermatas, which are a little more complicated. Only a little. The first thing we're going to do, of course, is use Control b to add a label right at the very beginning of the fermata. Next, move the playhead to the very first note after the fermata. We want to select everything from this point until the very end of the piece. We could do that with the mouse, but I want to use this opportunity to develop fluency with keyboard shortcuts instead of clumsily slinging your mouse around. So follow carefully. We're on the first note after the fermata. Hold shift and then press the down arrow a few times to extend the playhead to all the other tracks. And then press shift K and that should select everything from this point to the end of the piece. Next we want to cut the whole region and paste it a bit later to give space for the held note. That's control X for cut. Then make sure to extend the playhead again to all the tracks using shift down a couple times and then control V. Note that I didn't use the time shift tool in this case because it moves the entire label track, including all the labels before the fermata. Cut and paste will leave those earlier labels in their original spot while moving all the later labels to where they need to be in their new spot. Now that we've created some space here for the fermata, we need two things. A few more metronome clicks so players know when to cut off the note, and a count in so they can easily pick up the next tempo. This is why we have this secondary metronome audio track set up. I'm going to unmute the track, then copy over a few metronome clicks from the main metronome track. Then I'll time shift the new tempo over and create two count in clicks. The secondary track might get a little bit messy, but don't worry about it too much because that's what it's there for. As long as the main metronome remains intact, we're in good shape. The last thing to talk about is silence. You may have noticed that my fermata note cuts off very suddenly. This is the part of the video where I tell you not to overthink this too much. It's only a click track, not the final product, and only the performers are going to hear it. For any virtual performance, you should all agree upon exactly how many clicks each fermata should last. Don't be afraid to make a nice fat pause between the fermata and the next entry. In post-production, it's way easier to shorten a long silence than to lengthen a really short one. By the way, Let's say your reference track is pretty steady, but it has like a little tempo fluctuation at the end. Why not just silence that part of the song and let your click track do its thing? I do this really often in my click tracks. I'll cut out the reference track momentarily to accommodate my own tempo fluctuations. It's only a click track. Clarity is the foremost thing that we're worried about. To change a piece of your waveform to silence, select the section in question and you can press this button or use Control L to silence the audio selection. This brings me to the next step. We're going to use Control L to get rid of all excess clicks. Going back to the beginning of the piece, we know we want a few count in clicks, so we'll Control L the ones on the main metronome track. Then I'll go to the secondary track and I'll Control L all of it right up to our fermata. The very last step, and I always forget this one, is to generate silence at the beginning of the piece. Otherwise, Audacity will just delete it when you go to render. It's as straightforward as going to generate silence. That's about it. Now you have a few creative decisions you can make. I like to lower the gain on the reference track a bit. You may want to pan the click tracks all the way to the left or the right. Also, if you want to export a version of the click track without the reference track, for whatever reason, you can mute the reference track. Now all we have to do is export the whole project as an MP3. Make sure you save your work and then go to file, save other, export as mp3. If you don't see that option, you might be on an older version of Audacity. Don't panic, there's a way around it. Google L-A-M-E, lame encoder, and that should get you to where you wanna be. And we're done. To quickly recap, create a reference track, find and label all the time signature and major tempo changes, add two mono tracks to the project, and generate rhythm tracks. Use the time shift tool to add a count in at the start. Generate rhythm tracks for the rest of the time and tempo changes. Then for each tempo fluctuation, make sure you label the beginning and the end. Use sliding time scale to speed up or slow down. Use change tempo to sustain a local tempo. Then for each fermata, label the beginning and then select the end of the fermata. 
use the cut and paste function to create a space. Then adjust the secondary metronome track that we made to add clicks and countins. Finally, silence all unwanted clicks and generate silence at the very beginning of the piece. Adjust the gain and pan as desired, and then export it as an MP3. Thank you for watching. This is my first sort of tutorial style video, and if a lot of people find it useful, maybe I'll be doing some more in the future. In the meantime, you can visit me and check out my work at editionplamondon.com. Have a good one.